Good evening, YouTube family. Tio here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight with some more lake breakdowns. We had a subscriber ask us to do a lake breakdown for Joe Pool Lake. It's a lake I've never been to um, after doing this breakdown. I think I'm going to go out there and check that one out, too. I just got so many lakes I got to check out. I still haven't time to do it all. But anyways, going to do a breakdown for you on Joe Pool Lake. We're going to start off by doing the Google Earth waypoints. So we'll draw the water down, see what kind of creek channels we can find, brush piles, rocks, all that good stuff, ramps, you know, you know, all that good stuff that I like to look at. And after that, we'll follow that up with the second video that talks about offshore hotspots. Now, this lake doesn't have a ton of offshore hotspots. It looks like really you need to focus more on creek channels and where those points and those creek channels actually meet. That's probably going to be most of your offshore hotspots. But we're going to talk about those. I also found some brush piles that they talked about on Navionics that we can look at. So we'll look at that as well. And then uh, I think that's about it. So let's let's jump into this. Joe Pool. Video one, we're going to talk about Google Earth Waypoints. Here we go. Let's get started on Joe Pool Lake. So as I mentioned in the introduction, it's really between Fort Worth and Dallas, kind of like the, the lake get right in between. It's a little bit closer to Dallas maybe, but then you could say this, the southern end is a little bit closer to Fort Worth. So anyways, uh, that general area is where you're going to find Joe Pool Lake. Um, and I'm really going to start here. I'm not going to go down too far south. I mean, once I get past this point, it gets extremely shallow and there's no reason to mark any creek channels or anything here because basically um, they're very, they're visible even when the lake's uh, at full pool. So what we're going to do is we're going to start right in this area and we're going to work our way up and we'll, we'll finish back in this cove right here, but we'll work our way up uh, to the top here. And if we have enough time, we'll go touch that side as well. We'll talk about anything that we find here in this area. Um, which you didn't really see too much over there that would be worth looking at. And then we'll finish up on this bottom side. So let's go ahead and jump into this thing. Right here, the one thing that I wanted you guys to take a look at. Now, first off on the uh, on the timeline, 2019 seemed to be the best timeline that I could find. This would be 2021. I believe it was 12 of 2019. So on 12 of 2019, this kind of gives me the best picture. Now, if I look back here, you know, I don't see too much. There's a little bit of a I don't know if it's a power line, maybe where the power lines are or something like that, but it looks like a little bit of debris in there. But this is extremely shallow, so I'm not sure if you'd want to come back in here and fish this or not. There's probably certain times a year you would want to go back there, but for the most part, probably wouldn't want to get too far back in there. So I'm going to start us right here, and then we're going to work our way up. So the one thing that I noticed here is this little hump that's out here. Now, again, this is some pretty shallow water in here, so it's really going to be a, a timing thing, you know, time of year type of thing. But I always like these humps that come out. And they have this, what they call is the saddle that's kind of there. So where the hump kind of goes back down, kind of goes into more of a, a little bit of a deeper hole before it comes back up to the point. And so that saddle area is right in here. These are usually pretty good areas to locate fish. So if you're out here in this area, I, I know it's shallow. I know there's tons of trees and stuff like that, but that could be a really good little honey hole that's kind of hidden off the beaten path. Because most people are just going to see the point, fish around the point, and move on. They're going to totally miss that the best spot's right over here. All right, so then moving up this bank line. Didn't see too much. Tons of trees. A lot of, lot of nothing. A lot of just muddy banks and stuff like that. You know, I didn't see too much going on. And again, like I mentioned in the uh, the intro, this does, the lake does look like it has a lot of aquatic vegetation. So probably hydrilla and stuff like that. So this is going to be a lake where it's going to be all about weed lines and things like that. And a lot of times... On Google Earth, unless the image was taken at the right time, it's very difficult to see those weed lines. So uh, if you're out here fishing on this, you know, definitely pay attention to those grass lines. Find where those grass lines are and work the edges of them. Those are going to be your key spots being able to find fish, and especially if you can find those grass lines that come off the top of a point and then end in a creek channel. Those are going to be your hottest spots probably on the lake. So with all that being said, I'm just going to keep on moving up. Didn't see anything here. Didn't want to waste your time on this creek channel either, because when I looked at it, when the water was up, you can still kind of see it. So this must just stay fairly shallow pretty much all the time. So drawing back to 2019, came back up here. Didn't see too much. This looked a little interesting right in here because it looks like there's somewhat of a ledge there and right here. So maybe during like spawning season and things like that, that might be a good area to kind of come up and just take a look at and just see maybe post-spawn, pre-spawn type areas. Um, but I wouldn't spend too much time back in here. Again, you can see all of the trees that are in here. It looks pretty crazy. Now, one spot that I did like that was in here is this old pond dam that you'll see here. And so I went ahead and marked that on the Google Earth Waypoint. You'll see it 
It's got a little bit of a brush on the top of it, but a pretty significant pond dam that's out here um, that would definitely be worth fishing. You guys heard me talk about those pond dams before. Um, they can be really effective in the summertime as well. So if you can get your boat back in here through all these trees, you know, don't sit on top of the pond dam. Actually come over here if you can, get your boat in this area and fish this pond dam this way. Or fish it parallel, get parallel to it and fish it this way or fish it this way. So all those pond dams are good. Uh, definitely go check them out. Now moving on up the, uh, the bank line here. Next thing that I saw was just a little bitty rock pile that you could barely pick up. But you kind of see them scattered but this one was was definitely defined you know it was a bigger bigger area of rocks where it was where it was uh, defined here so i went ahead and marked that but again there's rock all along here so this is probably a pretty good area to find them you notice the transition there where it just went from basically nothing but mud to where we finally get a little bit of this rock or whatever it is that's there it's just enough to make a difference that you want to fish it so definitely fish this bank line and focus on those rocks see if they go a little bit further out if they do, those can be a really good area to do some shallow cranking and stuff like that. So then moving up here, we're getting closer to the bridge. Again, trees everywhere. So guys, be super careful out in this lake. Um, it looks like you could hit stumps pretty easily. Um, and I don't know if they have boat lanes or not. If they do, let us know in the comments. We'd love to go out there and uh, help somebody out selling those boat lanes as well as getting some boat lanes for myself. So I would know not to hit anything out of here. So uh, going in here, the thing that I really liked about this, and at first I thought this was a road bed. So you can see it right here and you can see the transition that happens on the landscape. You've got some rocks that are going along in here and I don't know if these are shell beds possibly instead of rocks, they could be shells. I'm not sure, but something's definitely going on in here. It almost looks like an old road bed. So if that is the case, you might want to go out here and check it out. I didn't mark it because I just wasn't confident enough that that's what that was. thought maybe my eyes might be tricking me there, but this looks pretty good. You've got two little points that come out here and a possible roadbed or a point that comes here that where they get pretty close. So this could be a decent little area to, uh, to fish around. Then moving up in this cove, again, didn't see too much on the bank line. Again, this is probably a grassy lake, so you're probably gonna see a lot more grass than the, the typical rocks and stuff that we've been pointing out in some of these. But then as I move up over here around the bridge, and of course, bridges are always great places to fish. I don't need to mark them for you, but. If you're passing up bridges when you're fishing, you're, you're missing opportunities because there's always fish on the bridges. Um, but if we move over here, there's another roadbed that you'll see where I've got it marked as well. And I don't know how far this thing actually goes out, uh, but if you follow that kind of that same angle, you could probably follow that roadbed pretty far out. And where those fish are going to set up on really depends on just where the bait fish is. So they could be all the way up here and they could be way out here as well, but they'll usually relate to that roadbed. So if you just follow that roadbed out, do a lot of scanning and things like that, typically you'll be able to find something. Just find the bait fish and you'll typically find the fish. So then gonna keep on moving up here. Next thing that I found on the bank line, you know, not seeing too much here, just a lot of nothing, but there is a little cover right here. So it looks like a brush pile, or maybe this is just where an old tree line was possibly right in here, but definitely a good little area there. It wasn't anything around it, any type of cover around it. And then that was the first thing that you see. So this would be a, a good area to look at. Now also up in here, I don't know if you're able to fish behind this. It could be like Le bon where you're not supposed to fish behind it. But if you can get behind it, there is rock back here. You can see it's more like riprap where they've set up a bunch of rock to, to protect that bank line. But you can see it looks pretty significant. Would definitely be worth uh, going out there and fishing that. There's also some additional boulders. So as we go up, you're kind of seeing the bank line you know, change here. It went from mud and now we're starting to see some rock. You've got a little boulder here. You've got some additional rock here as well and it kind of goes up this bank line pretty far until you get to this point so rock here i put debris here because i can't really tell if it's it's definitely not rocks um, but you can see just some debris i don't know if this is old refrigerators and stuff or what the heck all this stuff is but definitely a lot of debris in the water there's some more debris that's out in here you can kind of see something going out in this area so this whole kind of area right in here looks interesting. There's a lot of things for the fish to hide around to relate to and things like that. So I could see this as being a pretty good area and it has um, access to some pretty deep water being out in the main channel here. So then moving up here, I also see another rock pile that's right off the tip of this little bitty point right here. So that looks like it could be pretty good as well. Got a couple stumps around it and things like that. And then as we move into this cove, didn't see too much going on there. Again, just a lot of, just a lot of mud. Um, then moving on up, didn't see much going on on this bank line, kind of like that other bank on the other side, just a lot of just nothing. Now, 
that's not to say that there could be brush piles out in here. There definitely could be, but I just don't can't see them on, on Google Earth. But as you go up here, you notice how this kind of has a little bit of a drop here. This could be a decent area to look at. There's something going on here that's making that cave in. It almost looks like it's a little bit steeper there. And I thought at first it might be a drop, but then when you look at it this way, it kind of looks like it's still shallow in there. You can see the dirt. So I don't know if this would be worth it. I didn't mark it, but you might want to go up here and just check this out and see if there's any depth in here or if there's any depth change that kind of goes from here that's pretty drastic coming in through here and then coming back up. If there is, it'd be worth fishing it. There could also be like a little ditch right in there as well. So then moving on up the bank, I'm going to scroll out a little bit so you can see where I'm at. The next thing, obviously, that I would stop at, I didn't mark it for you because it's pretty obvious, but would be this point right here. Um, nice point setting out there. It's on the main lake. Um, great area to fish. And I'm sure, in fact, I think we'll talk about it here in a little bit on the next video when we talk about the offshore hotspots. But I believe that that point right there is definitely a, an offshore hotspot we even marked on the next video. So let's keep moving on the Google Earth waypoints for the shallow stuff. Now, moving on up here, I did see some more of those rocks. This could be an old roadbed too. It almost looks like an old roadbed, the way it's, you know, the way they're lined up here, but I can't really tell. Don't know the history on this lake, but you can see it again here. This could possibly be two roads, maybe one here and one here. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is. Uh, there's definitely concrete there. There's rock, and anytime you have those things, um, there's definitely going to be fish somewhere in the area. Again, you have some more boulders here, so I went ahead and marked those. A couple more rocks down in here. This looked interesting as well. Just kind of the same thing. You just you'd hit a lot of sandy, kind of muddy bank lines, and then all of a sudden you just hit a clump of rocks. So. If I were fishing this, I would just go hit each one of these rocks. I wouldn't waste my time maybe from here to here. I wouldn't even fish, but then as soon as I got to here, I'd start fishing again. Um, you know, and just, just work on those little rock patterns or whatever you could find. And also, these things look pretty interesting too, these little tree tree stumps and small small setups like that. I really always like those. That's probably that, uh, that buck brush that we talked about. That could be what that is. I'm not sure, but it kind of looks like it. All right, so then we're going to keep on moving up. I'm going to go back here, and the thing that I really liked about this is a real significant creek channel back in this cove. So if I move back in here, you'll see it. I marked it for you guys. It's pretty significant, so there definitely could be some fish hanging around that creek channel, especially where those little breaks are and things like that. And if we look at it when we pull up the, uh, pull up the water, you can still kind of see where that creek channel is. So I don't know how deep this is, but I went ahead and marked it for you anyways. But maybe, just maybe, it's deep enough right in here where you could find something going on. You just never know. All right, so again, this this lake was a little bit tricky because there's not as much to uh, to offer here, but I think being that it has grass, that changes everything. Um, so right here, did find a lay down. So I marked that for you guys. And then coming off this point, I also saw some additional rock over here, kind of like what you were seeing earlier. You just, you don't see anything, and all of a sudden you start seeing the scattered rock. So I went ahead and marked that as well. You know, those, again, those are things, depending on the depth, you can hit them with medium divers, you can hit them with square bills, and those can be really good areas to fish and also wobbleheads and Carolina rigs, all that good stuff. If you can find that scattered rock, that that's typically a good area to fish. So then I'm going to keep moving up. Didn't see too much going on in this bank line. You know, it's kind of boring. Not too much going on. A couple seawalls and things like that, but no ramps to mark for you guys. No major rocks or any crazy piles that I was able to uncover or anything like that until we get right around in here. And this is where I marked it for you guys as well. There's some rock right around in here. And there's also an old road bed. You can see it right here. So right behind where I put that rock would be a road bed as well. You definitely want to fish this area right here. That looks really, really good. So take a look at that. And then as you're fishing around here, obviously I've got a couple different spots marked here. But what's cool about this is it's right by the boat ramp. Literally launch the boat and then head on out there. But you got a ramp here or an old road bed here. And you've got rocks over here as well. And you've got rocks in this area too and then additional rocks all in here. Now this is all shallow stuff, except for right in here, you might get some good depth, you might get good depth there, and you'll probably get some pretty decent depth in here as well, because that's where that seawall is. So definitely go and take, take a look at that stuff. That all looks good. And then back in here, again, it's getting pretty shallow, but whatever this thing is, I have no idea what it is, but whatever it is, it's got rock around it too. So go ahead and fish around there if you're able to. Um, that could be a really good area to go fishing. So then I'm gonna keep on moving up. And the next thing that I really notice here is there's lots of debris that's out here. So this looks like maybe it was the old boat ramp, possibly. Can't really tell what it was. There's a parking lot here and there's a bunch of rock out here. But look at all this concrete rock. 
big pile of rock here, some debris out here as well. So I marked that for you as well. And obviously you want to be really careful because that looks like it'd do some damage to your prop. But man, that looks like a really good spot to, uh, to go find some fish. All right, and then I'm going to keep moving on up here. As we get up here, did notice a pretty significant laydown that's out here, like an old big old Christmas tree or something like that. I don't know. It's probably bigger than a Christmas tree. But anyways, really good laydown right there. So I'm going to mark that for you guys as well. Now, like you're seeing, not a lot of ditches, not a lot of creek channels and things like that on Joe Pool. So this one's going to go a little bit quicker. Did find some rocks out here. You'll see them scattered. So again, just another good bank line to work. You've got some debris here or some uh, laydowns and things, some stumps you could fish in here. you got rocks off of this point. You've got rocks going pretty much scattered throughout along this bank line with debris. So it would definitely be a good area to fish would be really just the kind of that bank line. Maybe work from that point to this point and see what you could find. And then moving on up here, again, not seeing too much on the bank line, some scattered rocks and stuff, but not enough to, uh, to want to mark it for you. Did see a lay down here that looks pretty significant. So I marked that one for you. That's probably a nice little crappie hole as well. And then moving on up the bank line here, the, I don't know what these are, they're like little tent pods or something. I can't tell what they are, but uh, they don't seem to go into the water. Like if I pulled the water up and I messed around moving the, moving the dates down as well to see how far this thing would go underwater. And this lake just really didn't fluctuate that much. So it doesn't look like those go underwater, but if they do, you'd, you'd want to go up there and fish around it for sure. You do have some scattered rock that's over in here. So I went ahead and marked this one because it was off the point. This one I left off, but it might be worth checking out. And then over in here, you can see all the rock along the seawall. This whole seawall would be definitely worth fishing. So just come up here and fish along the seawall if you can, unless there's a bunch of bank fishermen there, then leave them alone. But these seawalls look really good. See the shade that they provide? And that can be really, really good, especially come summertime, you know, right now, this time of year, that can be a really good, good thing to look at. And I did see some interesting stuff in here, like this thing here. This looked interesting. I can't really tell what the heck it is. I didn't mark it because I didn't even know what it was, but take a look. Maybe at that with the uh, the down scan and see what you find. And then up in here, you got some significant rock up here as well. And I couldn't tell if this was rock or if it was just like, I don't know. I, w I was having a really hard time to tell. So I didn't I didn't mark it, but go up here and take a look because you definitely got a seawall as well. So if that is rock, that would be great. But if not, at least you have a seawall that you could go and fish around as well. So those are all good areas to take a look at. And then I put rock up here. So basically, Start fishing here and just fish this seawall. Skip this little section here. Start fishing the rock right here. Fish the seawall to there. And then skip up to this point and fish this rock. Right in this area. So nice big chunk rock right in here. And then you got some scatter rock around in this area. And it looks like you got a decent little drop off that's right in this area as well. So this all looks really good. And then when you get up here, this is what another one of those things we were talking about. I don't know if you can fish behind them, but if you can, Get back here and fish behind that. Now, as we move on up, sorry, I thought I was getting lost. I thought I'd already gone through this area. So as we move on up, again, same type of thing as we saw in the last one. We've got these weird little buildings that are out here. Can't tell what they are. Maybe they're just fishing piers. We got rocks around those. So definitely take a look at that. And then as you get back in here, I didn't, you know, I saw these creek channels back in here, but they're they're just kind of all washed out. They're just not good enough. So I didn't mark any of them for you guys. I left that alone. There are rocks around these boat ramps. So you can see here, You've got rocks here as well as rocks right in here. So definitely take a look at those. Now that boat ramp is probably gonna be pretty busy. So you're not gonna be able to fish around it most of the time. But if you get there early in the morning or something like that, or you're in there in the evening, there's not a lot of activity. Definitely go over there and take a look at that. Those boat ramps can be money and those rocks around the boat ramps can be money as well. So then moving on up here, you know, just uh, not much going on in the bank line, some debris and things like that. This does look like some pretty significant rock in this area. So I went ahead and marked that. And then you've got some additional debris that's out here in the water as well. So you can see here, I don't know if this is an old dock or what it is, but uh, it's pretty significant. So it could definitely be a good fish attractor. Now you've also got laydowns right in here. Now this one here, I don't know if it's gonna go too far underwater. It's super hard to tell in this lake, but if you look here, kind of the tip of it's in the water. Now if I go back a little bit further, say to like 2011, you can see that it's not even there. So it's, it's hard to tell how far this thing is actually underwater. Um, 
I mean, here you can see a lot of grass. There's no lay down there. So I'm just having a really tough time trying to figure this thing out. But what I did just notice that I haven't noticed is that there was that marina there. So I need to pull that back up and see what's going on there. That looked really interesting. I might be able to find some stuff from that old marina. So then moving on over here, uh, we definitely have some rock right in this area as well. So let me pull it back up to where we were 2019, make it current. Come on, baby. So you got some rock that's off at this point right in here. I don't want nine, I actually want 12. So this looks really good right in here. Again, you got another good seawall that comes along this area. You know, these are always just really good because you've got a really sharp drop, drop, and they like to really hug right up against that seawall. So you can almost just, well, you can't almost, you can. You can go up and just flip that seawall, just get parallel to it if it's not too wavy and just flip against it and just stay parallel with it. You'll catch a lot more fish than you will if you were say 20 feet or 30 feet off the bank and casting you know, directly into the seawall. So anytime you can get parallel with it or close to parallel with it, you definitely want to do that when you're fishing these seawalls. All right, so then moving up here, we've got kind of a little swim area. I didn't see too much going on, some debris and stuff like that, but not too much going on there. Some interesting little points, but again, guys, not seeing too much on the bank line. Right in here, though, I was able to pick up some stuff. This this looks really similar to that old spot, right, where we had the old kind of boat ramps or whatever it is. This thing's got all kinds of debris and stuff. I don't think this is too much underwater, but if this is underwater, this would be a good area to look at. But definitely come over here and look at the, where this debris is, where I've got it marked, as well as where these rocks are. That looks like those could be really good uh, spots to take a look at. So let's go over. I think we can go ahead and finish this in one video. So I'm going to keep on going. You've got the dam that's up there and I checked these points up here, but unfortunately the, the view is just not very good, but it doesn't look like there's much going on. It's just this muddy, nasty stuff kind of bottom. But as you get down in here, you'll notice it kind of starts to change. And obviously there's a shadow there. So it makes it look like that's not red, but it really is. But what changes here is you've got some debris that's down in here. And I really like that. That looks really, really good. So take a look at that. I don't know what that is. It almost looks like, I don't know. I can't really tell. Almost looks like it could be two roads, but I can't tell, but definitely take a look at that. Going back in here in these little coves, just not seeing too much. There is a little bit of rock that I found right in here. So when I zoomed in, there was a little pile here. There's a little pile here, but this one looked like it was out of water, but this one looks like it could possibly be underwater. Uh, when you go back there, this could also be a lot of grass in this area as well. The water looks fairly clear in this area, especially for Texas. Then as I get down in here, not seeing too much, just a little bit of debris and stuff like that. Good little tree line right here if you want to fish that. But what I do like about this is right around this ramp again, you got all this riprap. So definitely fish around this rock, fish in here around this rock, around this point especially. And then over here on this side, you've got a lot of rock that kind of comes out into the water as well. And then of course, you've got another ramp with some rock there too. So then as we move down this bank line, you're going to see a lot of this which is pretty much nothing. But right here, you've got a little pond dam. And here's kind of your opening to your pond dam. And this is kind of your wall that you're going to want to fish around. So definitely fish in this area right in here, maybe right up in here as well. Anywhere you can get a little bit of a steeper drop and then right there where that opening is too, that could be a really good spot. And then as you move on down the lake, um, next thing that we're going to come to is this little rock point that comes out here. So again, some riprap stuff that's been set up. Um, probably to protect that little beach area or something like that, but definitely fish around that rock, especially on that point. I'm going to keep on moving down. The next thing we get to is down here around this marina. Obviously, you guys have heard me talk about a lot. You want to fish around the marinas anytime you get a chance. They provide a lot of shade. There's food opportunities there for the fish, all kinds of good stuff. There's a break wall here you could fish with those spinner baits we talked about. There's all this rock that you could fish with crankbaits as well. And you could go in these docks and actually flip around the docks too if you really wanted to get crazy. And then moving on down here, got another ramp and then rock that's back here. And then when you looked, if you look kind of further down in here, now these could be back here, but this is going to be really, really shallow. These could go underwater, but again, really, really shallow back in here. Good little ditch that's right in here, but some debris that's kind of off the rock here. So, you know, where most people are going to be fishing around that rock, you can pull off over here. And hopefully maybe we'll pull out something right in here, right where this little creek channel and this debris meet each other. So that could be a good area and also an area where you can get to uh, bank fishing as well. So then moving down here, didn't see too much on the bank line again, just a lot of, a lot of nothing, but there is a nice little creek channel that's back here. So I marked that for you guys. So 
take a look at that. Fish around that, really around those bins. So like right there where the hard bend is, that's probably going to be your hot spot. So right there where it kind of makes that, where that point starts to come out. So take a look at that. Now, obviously, you know, you want to fish points on this lake as well. And then down here, you've got another pretty good pond dam that comes out here. You can see it just barely, but definitely go fish that. Fish those areas around that pond dam and get on the inside of it and fish towards the dam this way. And then also parallel on both sides, you're going to start having some success on those things. And then moving on down here, uh, what do you know? We got another pond dam. This one looks like it's got some debris and stuff in the pond as well. So it could be interesting to, to fish around, but definitely a good little pond dam there. And then as we move further on down here, there's a ramp that's kind of hidden back in here. But a nice little boat ramp that you could fish around too if it wasn't too busy. And then I'm going to keep on moving down. Now we're going to get into an area again where I'm not seeing too much. This looks really shallow. A lot of debris and stuff. A lot of stuff that you could run into. You can see here we've got trees. Just super shallow. And even when you bring the, the lake up, it just doesn't look like it gets that deep back in here. So I probably wouldn't mess with fishing back in here. I mean, obviously, if I was a kayaker, I'd probably try to get back in here and see how deep this water is. If you can get to five, six foot, you know, that'd be a great, great place to go fishing, get back in there, get away from the boats. But as far as a bass boat, I don't think I would even mess with going back in that area because it just looks too stumpy and too shallow for me to even want to uh, get back there and tear up my equipment. And then you can see over here on this side, we just got tons of, of brush and stuff and trees that you could run into. So not seeing too much along this bank line. I went ahead and scanned the thing up and I just didn't find anything. I mean, there wasn't any rocks or anything like that. It's just stumps and debris. Um, nothing that really, really stuck out that would say, hey, go fish that that bank line. But what you will see when we get on the offshore hotspots as we're coming up this bank line is all kinds of good areas to go look at because there's a major creek channel comes right along here so although we didn't really find too much um, in this little area here on joe pool there's definitely a lot more to uh to find as we move on down so let's keep on moving and you're going to see what i'm talking about just i don't know if it was just bad imagery or what but just not anything worth pointing out to you guys had a little pond dam here uh, let's go ahead and mark that thing because that actually looks pretty good so we'll just put that right there as a pond dam And then that was really it, guys. But you'll see no rocks, all the same, no laydowns, no nothing. Hopefully it's grass or something because it just looks super boring. This point looks pretty good. And it's got some brush around it too, so maybe go flip around this brush and work around this point. This cove's kind of the same thing, just some stained up timber and stuff like that. Not too much going on there. You'll see the same thing going down this bank line. I thought I was losing my mind when I was doing these points. It's like, this is the longest I've ever gone down a bank line and not actually pick something out. So again, just not seeing too much here. Just some standing timber points, things like that. Nothing that's really attracting my eye or would make me want to tell you guys, hey, go fish here, you know, go look at this point. So um, I'm going to keep going. Again, nothing here, no rock at this point, just kind of a shallow do nothing point. Some timber back in here. Again, not seeing any rock, no ramps, no boat docks, no timber or very little timber and just really a lot of nothing. I mean, if you're looking in here, I'm seeing shallow water and I'm seeing nothing, maybe a little pond there. Again, you got trees everywhere, a little hump here. This can be interesting to fish right around here possibly, because it looks like you might have a pretty good drop right in there. That may be one of those offshore spots we talk about as well. I'm gonna keep moving guys, I don't wanna bore you. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nice little creek channel back there, but again, when I raise up the water, this thing kind of blocks it off so you can't get to it. Um, and then moving on down here, did kind of have that little lay down there, but when I raised the water up again, it's not that far underwater, so I don't think it was worth marking for you guys. So I had to get pretty far down here, and I went all the way down here and had to get all the way back to this point where I finally said, you know what, that looks pretty good. And SP stands for a shallow point, so you've got a really nice shallow point that comes out here. And then if you look right here, it looks like we've got a pretty good drop off. So you've got main lake shallow point that's got to be a good place to fish especially after going through that whole entire thing and really not seeing much now with that being said there is this one right here see how it comes pretty far out that one could be interesting to check out but it's not nearly as cool as this one is this one's super cool like that one that one's definitely gonna be a good place to uh, to fish so as we move down here we finally start to see some good stuff in here 
We've got an old roadbed that kind of runs through here. So I went ahead and marked that for you. Here's the roadbed, the RB. And then what you have here is you've got some additional rock that's over here. And then it looks like you've got either like a pond dam or a ledge or something going on right here. Now, at first I thought that was a roadbed and I guess that's really what it is. It's really, but so it's going to be a roadbed with a ledge. So really you've got a really nice, good ledge going on right in that area there. So take a look at that. That looks really good. This also looks like some debris down in here as well. So take a look at this. I would probably fish both sides of this thing and just see what you can find, especially if you can get out there when it's completely submerged under the water. This would be a really good area to fish around. All right, so I'm going to keep on moving down. We're almost finished with Joe Pool here. We got the road bed continuing. A couple more things to show you guys here. We got some rock piles that are down in here. Again, shallow rocks. So not sure how, how productive that's going to be for you guys. And then don't even get the riprap all around the, uh, the, the bridges or anything here. I'm going to disappointment. But uh, again, if this has got grass, that changes everything and that makes it all worth the while. So moving on down here, we do have some debris that's down in here. And then here, this is a pretty cool little ditch. So I went ahead and marked it because when the water is up, it actually is underwater pretty good. It goes, the water goes up to about right here. So that ditch is pretty significant. And there's just not a lot of stuff going on in this lake on the bank line. So when you find things like that, those can really be key areas to go find fish. And again, that's an area you could probably get to bank fishing if they'll allow you to fish off there. Down in here, just marked a couple more things. There was a pretty good lay down in here that looked like it was kind of man-made. Someone made a little pile here, got some rocks and some big old trees. So definitely take a look at that. And then when you get down in here, you're getting into some of that standing timber again. So just be careful. Secret pond back in there too, for those of you guys bank fishing, maybe go down here and sneak in there and check out that pond. And then moving down here, not seeing too much, just those stand-ups and we get back in here. And really, the only thing I saw back in this area, if you can get back in here, again, there's tons of stumps and things like that. It looks like you got some grass in here as well. But if you could manage your way to finagle your way back in here, this could be a pretty good area to look too. There's a really good creek channel that's hidden back in here. You'll see it right here. This is where it outputs and it's got some pretty good turns and things like that. It's got a deep hole that's way back in here as well. So you kayakers, that could be a really cool place to go back and try to uh, try to discover some new spots that those bass boat guys uh, probably wouldn't even dare to try to go back there because it'd be a heck of a time just trying to get back there. But if I can get back there, I'm going to try it for sure because it looks good. So then moving down here, didn't see too much on this bank line until we get down in this area. And this is where uh, really seeing some rock and things like this. I don't know what this thing is here. I couldn't tell, so I didn't mark it because I didn't want to sound like an idiot marking something. I don't even know what it is. But that looks interesting. We do have some rock in here, right in here. There's some rock right in here as well. There's more debris in here. Kind of looks like old pillars or something like that. Debris in here, more debris right around in this area. So you can tell that whole area is just got a lot of stuff that would be good areas to uh, for the fishes to attract here. And then you got these little points that come out here too that, that look interesting as well. And then as we get down in here, and again, not seeing too much on that bank line, but there are a couple things here. You got some rock piles in here that I marked for you. As we move down in here as well, you'll see some additional debris, some tires and things like that to look at. Maybe an old refrigerator, some more tires and things like that. And then as we get over here, we see another pond dam. So I went ahead and marked this pond dam as well. The opening for it is right there. You can see it. It's pretty significant. But this one looks good. It's got a lay down on it. The question is, is just the depth. I mean, when you get back in here and you start seeing the water getting really chocolatey after it was really clear up on the north side, it makes you really wonder how deep is this right in here? This looks like it could be really, really shallow. So not sure if these are going to be worth fishing or not, but I went ahead and marked them for you guys anyways. And hopefully I'll get a chance to go out to Joe Pool and and validate some of these too and let you know which ones are actually worth fishing and which one's probably not not going to be worth going to as far as a bass boat um, kayakers again if you get back in this area you know it looks fairly shallow so I'm not sure if you can get a bass boat back in here if you can this looks really good you've got a little rock that's right here on this little area where it splits out and it's also right off of this point too so this right in here i mean this little point that comes off here that could be money this area right in here definitely could be money if you can get back in there and again, you got a nice little creek that runs back in there as well. And then as we move over here, I just went ahead and marked this hump that's out here because you probably could at least get down in here and maybe fish around that hump and see if there's anything there. You got some good cover around the hump as well, but I don't know where that creek channel is. If that creek channel actually comes up against the hump, 
then it's probably worth fishing. If it doesn't, then you may want to bypass that hump. But, you know, take a look at it, see it. You never know. Some of those spots, they don't look that great, and then they end up being the best spots on the lake. So here you've got a little point that comes out, but I went ahead and just marked this because I wanted to mark the debris that was there. And then I think we're getting back down to where we started, guys, which was down there where that, uh, that first place was with the saddle. So that wraps us up for Joe Pool Google Earth Waypoints. Apologize for the long video, but I think it was worth it. We got it all done in one video. Hopefully you guys will go out to simplisticfish.square.site and get your SD cards or get the digital file for this. I'll share it with you guys. And don't forget, I put the offshore hotspots on there as well. We'll go over that on our next video. So until next time, guys, take care and tie lines.